In this video, I'm going to go through some of the basic formulas that are going to be useful for any discrete numeric probability distribution. The first are just a couple of basic rules about all probability distributions, just reminding ourselves here that the probability of any event has to be somewhere between 0 and 1. So we can't have negative values. We can't have them over 1. The second basic probability rule is that if you add up the probability of all of the possibilities, they have to sum to 1. So just a couple of things to keep in mind. Now with discrete numeric probability distributions, two of the formulas we're going to want to learn how to use are if we have some data in front of us. In other words, if we have a table or if we have a certain situation where we know two things. We know the x's. These are the possible values of the numeric outcome that we're talking about. And if we know the probabilities of the things that are possible, the probability of x, some people will refer to this as f of x as the probability of each value. But if we know these two things, one thing we might want to calculate is the expected value. Now, the expected value is just a way of saying we want to know the average. What is the long-run average of this process that we're studying, of this random process? And so we can use the symbol mu for the population mean, but normally when we're dealing with random things, we'll call it an expected value. And this does not mean the value that we expect to happen. It just means the long-run average. Another thing we might want to know is the standard deviation. And in order to get the standard deviation, we're going to want to calculate the variance and then take the square root of the variance. So here are the, here are the formulas. Let's use these formulas so that we can see what they're telling us to do. Now, to do this, let's look at a very simple situation here. Let's look at a six-sided die. So we're going to roll this die. It's a random outcome. And the possible values are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Let's open up an Excel window so we can see how to calculate the expected value and the variance using these two formulas. So here's a little Excel window. First, let's look at the expected value. So this can be used any time where we have a, a table of the x values. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 are the possible values here. Let me center that one here so that it looks like the others. And the probability of each of these possible values are just going to be 1 sixth, 1 out of 6 chances. Okay, so 0.16666. And let's copy that down. Now, just to double check, you want to make sure that all these probabilities are greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to one, and that they add up to one. Okay, so let's just sum those, and we know that in this case they're going to add up to one. I'm just trying to teach you some good habits to get into. Now, what this formula for expected value says is to take each possible value for x multiply it by the probability that it happens, and then after you do that, add them all up. So over here in a, over here in another window, sorry, in another column, let's first multiply, so we can just call this x times p of x, and let's just multiply those. So equals one times probability and copy that down. So the next thing is we want to add all those up. So let's add all those up. Equals sum. And we get 3.5. So this 3.5 is the expected value which again just means it's the uh, long run average. Okay, now we can actually see what we're talking about, expected value. 
So it just means that if we were to roll a die and, and record all these numbers as we were rolling and rolling and rolling, and we were to average the values of all those rolls, we would expect the value to get closer and closer to three and a half after we've done this for a long time. Now, again, don't let the words fool you. In English, expected means this is what we expect to happen. But of course, this three and a half is nev never what we expect to happen when we roll a die. You just can't roll a three and a half, okay? Now, let's calculate the, here, let me move this down here. Let's calculate the variance. So let's move our variance formula over here where we can see what we're looking at, okay? So the variance formula is a little bit more involved. It looks a lot like the regular variance formula you would use for data. But the variance formula says to take each number, subtract the mean from it, and then square it, and then multiply that value by the probability. And after you're done doing that for all the numbers, add them all up. So let's do this. So in this cell over here, let's just go ahead and do everything in this first part. Let's take each number, subtract the mean from it, and square it. So in Excel, I'm going to say equals, parentheses. Let's take the number one. Let's subtract the mean, which is three and a half. And let's square that, raise it to the second power. Okay, and let's just copy that formula down for all the possibilities. Now, let's multiply that times the probability that that thing occurs. So, equals x minus the mean squared times the probability over here, 0.1666667, and copy those down. And now, if we add all those up, that will give us the variance. So equals sum, enter. So this is the variance of a six-sided die. Now, what does the variance tell us? Well, nothing much is my interpretation of the variance. It just gives you an average squared deviation, which is hard to understand. What we want to do is take the square root of the variance. And that's the standard deviation, which will tell us a common distance that these numbers are from average. So the standard deviation is about 1.7. What does that mean? Well, let's, let's picture this. Let's make this a little bit wider here. Here are the possibilities. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Oh, not seven. What am I talking about? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, and six for a six-sided die. The mean, the expected value is right here at three and a half. Okay. What that standard deviation is trying to tell us is how spread out are the results that we expect. And sort of like, it's, it's a little harder with discrete variables to e interpret it the way we do with continuous variables, but we can still kind of get a sense of the meaning. It says if we start here at the mean and we go up one standard deviation and we go down one standard deviation, that what we'll normally find is most of the time these are going to be the outcomes that we see. So in this case, we're starting at three and a half, and if we were to add 1.7, that's going to take us to four and a half, about 5.2. So that's going to take us up here, between five and six. And if we go down one in standard deviation, down 1.7, that's going to take us down to three, down a little bit past two, to 1.8. So the standard deviation is sort of telling us that here's the most common range of things that can happen, two, three, four, and five. And most of the time, if we roll a die, that's what's going to happen, a two, a three, a four, or a five. Okay, So that's the mean, the expected value, and the standard deviation for a discrete probability distribution. Let's look at one more example just to make sure that we have this idea. 
Now, here's some data that I collected a few years ago about an intersection in the town where I live. And the X's here are how many accidents occurred at that intersection each month. And here are the frequency. So I observed 57 months worth of data. And eight times out of 57, I saw no accidents. 16 times out of 57, I saw one accident. 16 times out of 57, I saw two accidents, and so on. And the most accidents I saw were eight at this intersection. So using some a relative frequency method, we observe some data. We want to calculate probabilities. Here are the probabilities. Just take each of these numbers and divide them by the total. So we want equals here 8 divided by 57. And that will convert these into probabilities. And copy them down. Now that we have a probability distribution table with x's and probabilities of x, we might want to know two things. Number one, what is the average number of accidents? So let's just quickly do this like we did before. So we need to take using our formula. Don't move that over here. So looking at our formula again, we want to take each of the x values, multiply it times the probability, and then add all those things up. So over here, say equals zero times the probability we see zero. And then we're going to copy that formula down. And then down here, we just want to add all those up, sum. And so this is telling us that at this intersection, there are almost two accidents per month. Again, that's the mean or the expected value. So 1.98 accidents at this intersection per month on average in the long run. Now, if we wanted to know the variance, or the standard deviation, Here's our formula, <clears throat> and so again, we want to take each possible value, the x's, subtract off this mean, 1.982456, square that, and then multiply them times the probabilities that that would occur, and then add them all up. So over here, I'll do all that in one giant formula. So equals, parentheses, x minus the mean, and I'll just type that in to keep it easy, 1.982456, square that, and then multiply that times the probability that it happens, and that's in cell D3. Then we copy that down, and then we add all that up. I'll just copy this formula over here. And so that's the variance. And to get the standard deviation, square root of that. So we're going to have a number close to 3, but a little bit less than 3. So 2.93 is the standard deviation of the number of accidents at this intersection. So again, the standard deviation here is just a common distance that the number of accidents we're going to observe is away from the mean. And so the mean is about two, so that means that most of the time we're gonna see two accidents, plus or minus almost three accidents. And that's gonna be the most common sort of outcomes. And we can see from this data that that's gonna cover just about all of the outcomes that we'll see. Again, the standard deviation is a little harder to interpret when you're looking at discrete variables and as opposed to continuous ones. So that's all for this video. I'm going to make some additional videos where we look at lottery tickets because lottery tickets are an interesting example of how you can use these formulas. So join me for those example videos and you'll see some other interesting examples of how to analyze discrete numeric probability distributions. Good luck.